guys. Hope you're well. So today I actually want to talk about something which is, uh, it's kind of a bit special. In, you know, my opinion, I've seen loads of comments to it and people that do this and uh, it's worthy of a Darwin Award. I mean, why would you take something that is perfectly safe and turn it into something that is potentially explosive and flammable and harmful? I mean, it's like shaving your head with napalm. Works on paper, in reality, not so much. So what I'm talking about is trying to boil off methanol from your alcohol. Yeah, I know. Some of you will be laughing and going, that is the dumb idea. But there are people that actually do this and think that it is a good idea and then they pass the information on to other people. And the idea is that we stop this because it is a really dumb idea. I mean, the potential for harm outweighs the minute amount of good it could ever possibly do, if any. So uh, let's just have a quick chat about this and hopefully clear this up so we can all stop doing it and get back to the things that we love doing, which is creating fantastic alcohol safely. So the concept of uh, heating up your alcohol isn't exactly new. I mean, it all spawns, it all kind of comes from distillation where we are taught that the first thing that comes out of a still is methanol and then alcohol and then fusel oils and water at the end. In reality, that's not how it works. I mean, it works on paper, that's how we understand it very easily. But the reality is, it's called preferential separation, which means it has a preference to remove more methanol at the beginning than it does at the middle or the end. But at the same time, you're still removing alcohol and water right at the beginning. So uh, it's instantly sort of debunked all of a sudden because you're not just removing methanol, you're driving off alcohol. So why bother brewing something if you're just going to be removing the alcohol anyway? Just don't do it. I mean, that's, that's basically what it comes down to. So the moment that we kind of understand that it's not an absolute temperature, it's just a preferential temperature to remove more than something else, you kind of work out that the moment that you apply heat to alcohol, you're burning off alcohol. I mean, if it takes you 10 minutes to get up to that magical 65 degrees, for that whole 10 minutes, you are evaporating alcohol, and then you turn it off, and in that cool down town, you're also evaporating alcohol, so you may remove a small amount of methanol. I mean, a negligible amount but the quantity of alcohol that you are basically wasting is vast because there is far more alcohol than there is methanol. So you're losing more alcohol than you would potentially be saving yourself from. So people that say, oh, it's great, I don't wake up with a hangover. That's probably because you're only drinking basically mildly alcoholic flavored water. I mean, we could do that by just having a beer. So uh, just something to think about. So just as like a little thing, because it is the fear of methanol, it would take over 15 gallons of red wine, which you can argue red wine has the highest amount of methanol in all of the alcoholic beverages that you are ever going to drink. It takes over 15 gallons, over 15 UK gallons of wine you would have to drink in one sitting to get a fatal dose of methanol poisoning. Uh, that's a lot of wine, 15 gallons, over 15 gallons. That is 120 bottles of wine you would have to drink in one go. I, I don't see anyone being able to do that. So I'm not just making these figures up. I actually went and got a scientifically done study, not homebrew science, because that is wildly inaccurate. That's where the bubbling for hours on end comes from. But actual research done by proper scientists, you know, with PhDs and all the rest of it. And they actually did a thing on red wine. I've chosen red wine because it has arguably the highest methanol content. So uh, it's higher than cider. And most of the ciders we use for freeze distillation are apple juices. And they normally have most of the pectin removed. That's why it ends up nice and clear. So as long as you follow this as a guide, you won't need to even think about boiling. 
your alcohol because well it's a bad idea unless you're going to be distilling it don't do it that is basically what it comes down to so hopefully this has been helpful uh, you can check out the stuff down below and uh, you know it shows you a rough guide and as long as you keep within those limits Nethano is never gonna be a problem you're just gonna have to put up with a bit of a hangover which you can get from methanol or in some people they actually get hangovers from alcohol <gasps> so uh, you know it's all good fun anyway guys hopefully that is gonna stop you guys if you were even thinking about it from even trying it because it's just a dumb idea really bad so I hope you enjoyed this video guys don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well subscribe if you feel like it carry on homebrewing see you later so I just want to take a second to thank my patrons, uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff, and as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon only videos per month, so it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below, and of course the Patreon and subscribe button, don't forget to check those out. See ya.